I think I have more than anything when, when we go places and lead worship, people are like, I, I just want to be, how, how did you get so free? How, 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 are you, how do you express the Lord so freely and get lost and not pay attention to anything else? Well, the truth is I am paying attention to other things. You just don't know it. But it's, it's all the in-betweens. It's never just what you see. It's never the, okay, we're all together in a corporate setting and now we're leading worship, this is what we do. Like, the only reason that I am able to go to that place or that any of us are able to get lost, like William was talking, is because in the secret place, we've gone after him. Because there's no formula for this. But going after him in the secret place, going after your stuff, going after, I don't want this. Take this for me, baby. My sweet husband. Everybody just give it up for my husband. One of the reasons that you will be hindered in encountering the Lord is you. It's like the biggest reason. And some of us are afraid to face ourselves. We're afraid, we're afraid of what will happen, like kind of like earlier today. We're afraid of what will be unearthed in us because the closer we feel the presence come, the closer we get to him, the more stuff is stirred up. And we're like, hold on, I didn't know that was there and I am not prepared to deal with this. But that will be the case on the journey. It's, it's the kindness of God yeah. to bring it up at yes. the right time. Yes. Yes. And, and here's the deal. When, when you come into the presence, when you steward this secret place well, when you just come before the Lord, like, seriously, my, my falling in love with God happened by just being still. Just like I, I don't know if some of you were in the class yesterday, but just my experience is going into that place and saying, I, don't, I know you know what I need. And I know you know the desires of my heart. But I know that what's most important is to be with you. And so I'm here. And whatever you want it to be, let it be that. And if that's that you come and speak to me, then say whatever you want to say. If that's that you come and physically move on me and, and you manifest yourself in a, in a physical way, let it be. If, if you don't have anything to say, but you just want to come sit a while, you know, then let it be. And if I don't hear anything and if I don't feel a thing, I know that you've already done everything you could to get to me. And that I'm, I'm going to sit here until the truth beats the facts and just being with you takes over me. Sometimes it's not about a feeling. Sometimes it's, it's really yucky stuff. And, okay, let's talk about this. How many times have you sat down to try to worship at home alone and you're like, the last thing you can think about is worship. It's like my brain will not stop thinking about all the things I need to get done, the things that I have, like just pressures. I mean, all of a sudden, things that you didn't think about for who knows how long come up when you're trying to worship or you're trying to pray. You're like, I want to eat. I'm hungry. I can't pray until I eat. I'll just, I'll starve. And I can't focus until I eat. And then you start eating. And then something else happens. And then you don't worship. And then you, blah. Or... When you are, my husband and I just talked about this yesterday, when you're tired and exhausted, and sometimes when you're in ministry, when you're in the church all the time, when you're in the house of God, the building that is the church, the last thing you want to do is go home and worship because you are, as a worship leader, not only did you come up here and lead everybody, like, lead everybody in worship, but like you're feeling all their stuff. Like the root, there's a swirl in the room and you're like, if you're anything like me, I'm like, Woo! Okay, there's this, 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 and this going on. Well, what's yours, what's mine, what's theirs? And how are we gonna facilitate this? Okay? The worst thing we could ever do as worship leaders is take our cues from people. I don't care what anybody tells you. I know that there are times when you can tell, I know you look at people and you go, okay, they're feeling this. This is a good thing. Everybody's responding. We'll keep going. But to make that a rule is dangerous as a worship leader because. People are moved by many things, and they're looking to you to lead them. And if you lead them there, they'll probably go with you, because that's not their role. It's more, you, you have got to pay attention here and be able to sort the stuff out. So in the sorting, it's an interesting process to figure that out, to 
in the secret place, and mostly I want to talk to you about the secret place. All of this applies in a room full of people, but the most important place for you to do this is at home. If you are angry, if you're mad, if you're frustrated, if you're ticked, like, I don't know what you guys do when you're upset or if you let yourself, when, when I was growing up um, in somewhat of a religious environment, real Jesus, like my parents are heroes, but like some of the environments we were in, even the houses we were in, like you, you just, as a pastor's daughter, you weren't always allowed to have problems, you know what I'm saying? And as leaders, we get like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to deal with this right now because this person in front of me needs more than I do right now. Biggest, fattest lie ever. The enemy will try to make you feel all the time like something else is more urgent. But what's actually important and what seems urgent can be two very different things. Because there will always be something else pressing in on you. Always something that needs to get done. Always another person to pray for. Always another person who needs something that they think you have, and there will always be an opportunity for you to pour out. But you are the only one who can confront your stuff. You are the only one who looks you in the mirror every day, and you know what's really in there. And some of you have stuff suppressed from a lifetime of who knows what. And maybe it's not all bad. Maybe it's just like, for me, my biggest deal was not knowing how to process pain. I was so used to people around me being in crisis that I was, the instant reaction was to take care of them and be okay until later. Always. It was, it was like, and I think one time, my, my dad being a pastor, amazing man of God, he was like openly attacked like by these people in a really public setting once for some, something that he didn't do at all. I mean, come on, I've watched my dad for how many years of life, and I know how he lives, and I know his walk with the Lord. Like, I'd get up in the night to the sound of him crying and worshiping in the living room. Come on, I know my dad. So I, I'm watching these people openly accused, like, and they did it in front of people on purpose, and I'm like, that day, and I didn't realize that I'd made a covenant. I didn't realize that I'd made an oath. Your words are powerful, guys. What you do about what happened, like your response, what you believe, yep. you, you end up forming soul ties. And I know what a soul tie is. You've heard soul ties. Okay. It's not even the action that forms the soul tie. It's what you believe about it afterwards. It's the belief system that's attached that will make it a soul tie that actually gives it a right to be there. Because if you, think about this, you could do something wrong, you could make a mistake, and I'm not making light of it, like, but you make a mistake, and, and let's say immediately, like, okay, when you're under grace and you know that you're a child, you're a, a daughter or a son in, in the kingdom, like, you go, your heart's broken, but you know how to clean up a mess and get right with him and keep going and not go back there again, okay? Like, we, to repent is to turn the other direction and go another way. But it's, it's so easy, it's so easy when you believe something else, right? as soon as that thing happens, if you're someone who's been under religion and you have, have to deal with like punishment, you're afraid somebody's going to punish you or kick you out because you made one mistake, you're afraid you can't stay in the family, you'll no longer have your position, you'll no longer be a part of anything, but you're afraid of getting kicked out, what's the first thing you wanna do? There's fear, you immediately partner with fear, and immediately you're like, I can't tell anyone. I can't tell anyone this happened. And then what do you have? You have secrets. And then what do you have? You have dis disconnected relationship from between you and between the Lord because you can't call it what it is because you don't feel safe because you're afraid that you're going to lose, yeah. right? We have got to become people, especially as worship leaders, guys, especially as musicians who are, who are in front of people all the time, Re not just leading them, but releasing things. Whatever you are carrying, you are spilling out. And I do believe that God um, 
works through us anyways. I'm, I'm not saying that he can't use us or that the spirit of God doesn't come just because we have a secret. I'm not saying that because clearly he does because we all have stuff. But the point is like we have got to become people who in secret will confront things and who aren't afraid. Like it's not a ritual. How many of you actually, no, nope, I'm not even going to have you raise your hands. That's too easy. So I hear a lot of people say, like I asked them, so have you been dancing? Like, they'll ask me, like, they, I've got this thing going on and I just don't know how to deal with it. But they come to me and I'm like, okay. What did the Lord say about it? I'm not saying that you don't need people. We, we need people bad. The point is, what did the Lord say about it? Have you even talked to him about this? Do you, do you worship at home? Do you, well, how's your, what's your secret place look like? What's going on there? It's like the first question, right? Do you dance before the Lord at home or do you only dance when you're surrounded by 700 people also dancing. Isn't that funny? How when you're home alone, you can feel so stupid for spinning through the house. But that's where you'll get most done. Sometimes this, um, I think it happens to different people at different times, but I, lots of times when I, the Lord's talking to me, my I told you my ears will burn or my head will shake or something. Something shake, everything. I never know which one's happening. But lots of times when my head is shaking, it's because the Lord's trying to shake what I think about something. He's trying to get me over something. Or that's what's happening in the room. Like today that happened to me a lot because I, that's what I felt like the Lord was doing. I wanted, I wanted a keyboard in here because I wanted to show you like a pract- like practical side of this because I was going to be a brave bear and play. I was going to play. Um, and just give you an example of what I do at home, but Steve, Stephen can testify to this. He's come home many days and found me in a mess at the piano. I, I don't like to lead from an instrument because I'm not, like, proficient in it. I, I'm growing, but I don't like, I'm, I feel distracted by it, and I'm always concerned. Like, William, like, I'm a nervous wreck if I try to, <laughs> but if it's just me and I, you know, am just worshiping and I can just be prophetic, then I'm fine. <laughs> Because you don't need more than two chords or one. It's fine. And I feel fine with that. But the reason that in worship I can get to the place where I completely, and I can't even say completely because I, I don't think I'm there yet, guys. I think it's always a layer at a time. And um, all of life is this process of undoing. We're not undone yet. The reality is that we won't be until we're face to face with him. That is the only place when all, when everything else will just fall apart. Some of you need to learn to fall apart. When's it okay? When you're in ministry, when you're leaders, when's it okay to not be okay? The biggest lie I had to break off of my life since coming here was that, like, I believed that I had to be okay all the time. And you don't. Because the truth is, most artists and musicians, like, we're like the messiest group of bunch people you'll find. We are the messiest, man. We make messes all the time. Whether it's offending someone or whether it's just like we're moody or uh, I'm feeling something and, like, your emotions get the best of you. I don't care. And I'm, I'm not saying that's all musicians, guys. I'm not putting that on all of you. I know that there are leaders who are completely different than that. But I'm saying on a whole, we're like, beep, 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 Okay. We can be in our own little world sometimes. You cannot be afraid to sit down. If you've got stuff going on, like you're you're angry. Sometimes I'll sit down. Being in our first year of marriage, let me just tell you something. It is the most beautiful season of my whole entire life. And it is also... (laughs) the most humbling season of my entire life. Why? Because I went from doing what I felt like I was born to do into doing nothing that I've ever done before. Like nothing that I knew how to do. I won't list them all off for you. We'll just say, everything's new. New country, new husband, new family, new friends, new everything, new church, new, oh, name it, it was new for me. And it was emotional. Guys, it was emotional. (laughs) But being someone who, like, my whole life, I've been okay. Like, this is what we do. Okay is what we do. 
And what I realized was there's, we're, we're just in layers. There's, you might be, uh, the Lord may have undone you in this layer, but in the next one, you're still kind of wound tight. And when the Lord touches on that thing, you have to be willing to let it go. And it has to be okay if it's a mess. Yeah. Some of you are like, you refuse to let it happen. I'm not saying you vomit all over your congregations. I'm saying this is home stuff. Like this is what you do at home. You sit down, if you do it with an instrument, like if you need to play something, if you need to hear something, some of you need to lay in the floor and be still until it leaves. Some of you need to not do a thing. Some of you are so used to doing that that is why you're done up. You don't know how to be still. You're so used to dancing that you're like, that's your answer for everything. You need to calm down. And then the other half is like, you're so used to, you're so used to like being still and soaking and waiting that nothing ever gets done. Okay? Sometimes, example, I know this is really practical. Is this helping at all? Are you getting anything out of this? Okay. Because there's, I wish I had an hour for this one because I wanted to share like a bunch of stuff with you. But um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to highlight things. PowerPoints. I'm not a PowerPoint person. <laughs> um, I... If I go into worship, if I'm trying to get to something that I feel like really matters to me and I'll sit down to pray or worship and I, and I have this stupid thing on my mind, I can't stop thinking about it. I'll sing it out. I don't care how stupid it is. I don't care if it's I'm hungry or I'm worried about something. I sing it out. It, it's dangerous to me. I get, I get stuck in my head. That's where I'm dangerous to myself. I'm an extrovert with introverted tendencies and I love to go crawl in a hole and be inside my head. That's what I like to do. But, so I know that it's dangerous to me not to get it out. So in my process with the Lord, the reason why the letting go happens is because I will sit down and sing it out to the Lord. Like months ago, maybe I'll play it for you on my, I don't know how we do that. Months ago, I, I was so frustrated, so frustrated, like Stephen, was at work and, you know, he'd, you know, work like, what, seven, seven, eight-hour days sometimes. Not all the time, but um, he's self-employed. Like, he's a brilliant, he's brilliant in everything he does. But um, he, he'd be away at work, and I'm home alone more often than I'm used to in a new country. And I'm, it's me and the dog, so I talk to God way, like, way more than even, Normal, like he's, you know, all the time. Talk to the dog a lot. <laughs> but in this season, I learned like I've never learned before. And I dealt with stuff before. But I learned that there's like, that the messy stuff is beautiful. Yeah. That the process is beautiful. So that the promise is right in the middle of that. And yeah. if we forsake the, pro the process, yep to get to where we think we need to be yes. so badly, then we're not building anything. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we're just trying to have it all together at once. And believe me, like, what people will admire about you and trust you with has nothing to do with how together you are. It's mm -hmm. how willing to fall apart you are. Yeah. Because I guarantee you, when you're alone with the Lord and you let yourself fall apart, that is the place where you are more together than you've ever been and you feel shredded, but he calls it beautiful, and he's just sorting. He's just sorting, and some of you, like, some of you, the Lord is leading you in this season to do that with people, to trust people with your stuff. There are humans who are trustworthy. They're not perfect, but they're trustworthy, and you need family. Isolation is the fast track to demonization, friends. You close yourself off with just you and what you believe, Holy hell. It just rolls right in. You guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Holy hell is a really interesting dichotomy. I did not mean to. It was, you know, it's that, that tension we live in. There's holy and then there's, you get it. Yeah, I meant it. I, that was, I was, I won't say I was prophesying. My husband, um, I know we're out of time. Dang it. This is not a class for half an hour, guys. Um, cause this is just that. But anyways, um, Stephen, thank God the Lord sent him to me. He's not a musician. He could be, he's not, he chose to do something else. I, I dated musicians and 
That did not work for me. Um, <laughs> numerous times. It was like, you know what? Yeah. I'm like, you know what? This is uh, chaos. And I have to stabilize myself to stabilize you. And it's not really working anymore because I'm like, this is it is. And I, if I have to, right, I have to be okay. I got to be okay. I got to be okay because you are not right now. And I need to be okay. And, um, and no, they're amazing people. My husband, I said, God, send me somebody who works with his hands. My husband built the house we live in now. It's a beautiful thing. He's brilliant. And, um, the Lord, he's such a gift to me because in this season, everything inside me, I'm telling you, I have never in all my life felt feelings of inadequacy like I have in my first year of marriage. And it's not because he does not love me and that he is not amazed by me. It's that I feel like I'm not doing anything that I'm good at. It's that there's eggs all over the floor and then I drop the rice in that. And then there's, and then there's like, you know, that recipe, that just came out mushy and that was an accident. And everything is like... Ooh, like I feel like I suck at everything. <laughs> and the Lord's just like, this is just part of the undoing. This is the next season. And you've got to be okay with not being okay. And it's got to be okay for you to not be like the strongest person ever. Because I've always had a pretty strong sense of identity. I was like, I was the strong girl. I loved God. I was strong. Knew what I thought about things. And then I get a husband who's just as stubborn, if not more than I am. So it, God knew what I needed. And even just weeks ago, I'm, I'm processing this thing out with the Lord. And he's talking to me about some, another layer of fear. Guys, sometimes the enemy will make you feel like, we are never getting past this issue, and I've dealt with this a million times, and it's still here, and I'm not growing. No, sometimes it's just layers. Give yourself grace. Yeah. You know, and if people don't, then forget them. You need grace, because you were a mess. You were a beautiful mess, and you need grace. And if you're not getting it from people, you... I'm not saying they excuse your sin or your stuff, but I'm saying you need grace to work it out. So I'm, you know, I'm processing this thing. I'm distracted by time. Focus me. And, and I'm like laying in bed. And I'm being introverted, and Stephen's already passed out. And I know he's, he works so hard. And I'm like, the last thing I want to do is ask for help right now because he does so much. And I, in this season, feel like I'm not doing anything for him. I sit at home, and I write songs, and I process emotion. <laughs> and he comes home, and I haven't talked to anybody all day. And so I'm like, hey, honey, how's your day? And who are you with? What would you do? And telling everything. And, um... You're so handsome. I love, and I guess what? Guess what I did today? I'll tell you. Um, it started with, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, because he's, and he'll go, whoa. He go, he go, the love tank a little run on empty, babe. Uh-huh. It's like, all right. And he'll sit, he's patient. He'll sit down and talk to me because he's, he's much more introverted than I am. <laughs> so I'm in bed. We're as, like, he's asleep. And I'm laying in bed, and I am sobbing. And I'm, I'm, do, I'm doing one of those hideous, like, <laughs> you know? Like, I can't, I mean, breathing heavy, snorts every now and then. Like, and I'm roll. we have a king-size bed, because we love each other, but, like, when it's time to go, we're like, night. And we roll over, even though I always try to touch him, because I'm a touch person, so I'm like, <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. He's, he's like this, tucked in, and I'm like, just give me a, tuck my toes under him. So anyways, I'm like words and touch. So I'm like, talk to me and touch me while you do. Go. So I'm laying there and I'm like, I, I like literally had chest pains. I had let myself get to a place where I was like, I hadn't talked about how I felt because I didn't want to put it on him or on, right? And, um, and I just, I hadn't had I hadn't taken the time yet to process because we were doing stuff. And so I'm laying in bed processing this. And I'm like, and, and so Stephen, in a dead sleep, I kid you not. He didn't even re remember it. I kid you not. And I'm trying to breathe quietly. You guys know how you try to cry quiet. <laughs> That's me. Because it's so hard, but I'm trying to be quiet. 
I mean, we've ha- we even have the humidifier going because I have to sleep with one of those. It's so dry. And Stephen, out of a dead sleep, I'm talking to God, and I'm like, because I wouldn't wake him up. And the Lord's like, wake up your husband. This is what. This is why you're married. This is why you're one to do this together. You need help. And I'm like, but I don't wear a Okay, fine. So I'll wake him up. So the Lord wakes Stephen up. He rolls over in a dead sleep, no joke, and goes, baby, don't isolate yourself. And he pulls me over and goes back to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Winning. I win. And he's done that so many times since we got married. My point being that, like, Sometimes, like, no matter how strong you get, you'll always hit another layer of you that needs to be healed because we're not perfect. And as long as we're in this life, there will be something you need to get rid of. But the point is to to seek his presence and to take time to sing it out. And if you're upset, sing about the fact that you're mad. Get that stuff out of you so then you can worship. Sometimes we, we try to push ourselves to be ready to do something that we're not ready to do. But wouldn't you rather your heart be completely in it? Deal with the stuff. And, the, and, and press in. Let that be part of your pressing in. Let that be part of the undoing. Let the Lord completely undo you. And don't dig at stuff that he's not touching on yet. You'll get yourself in a real nasty place if you start picking apart your whole life. Let Holy Spirit speak stuff out and the people you love speak stuff out. Don't go digging. Let him deal with it as it comes. Because he has a, the process. He has a plan. And he knows what's best for you. And he won't give you more than you can handle, but you will pull yourself into that place if you don't let him do it, if you don't process this with him. I, wanted, I had a lot of things I was going to share with you, like examples. I was going to play for you some really gnarly process songs that I just exploded out with the Lord. But look, can I just pray for you? Has this helped anybody? Yes. Okay, deal with your stuff. Get, let him undo you. More all the time. God... Oh, my goodness, if we had more time. Thanks for being with us in the process. Thanks for planning the process. Thank you for knowing that we would need it. Thanks for knowing that in the process we're becoming men and women, that we could never have been without it, that you were building in us something that is um, so much greater than if we walked around the issue, if we walked around the thing, if we took a shortcut. God, we don't want to be people who take the shortcut. We want to be people who... um, follow your lead. And if that's right through, (laughs) then it's right through. God, I I just release grace and peace. Lord, I ask that each one would feel your massive grace for them in their process, that um, whether it's something they've dealt with for years, whether it's a stronghold, whether it's a belief system, whether it's fear, whether whatever this thing is that comes after them or constantly bugs them, God, I just, I just ask that you would set them free. That God, in in their simple process with you, as they sing it out and get it out and let it out, that you would heal them in that place. That they would learn that it's okay to be a mess, that it's a beautiful thing, that it won't always be like this forever. And that in the place where you pull us to pieces, that we're more together than we've ever been. Lord, we just, um, I just even speak um, to their bodies as they're processing this stuff. We just speak to their bodies and tell it to come up to their spirits. Just prophesy that you would heal them mind, body, and spirit, that they would be whole beings, that it wouldn't just be one part of them, but that they would figure out how everything inside of them functions together, how it was all your perfect plan, that no, nothing inside of them would be shut down because of fear or anything else, but that they would fully be alive. Yeah. Help them find safe places to do that. Amen.